just as a gentleman is one who dabbles neither in trade nor in commerce, gentility being in itself a, a full-time and onerous occupation. So I devote myself passionately to the intricate art of being feminine. Oh, foolish girls imagine that beauty is all sufficient, that possessing it one can do without such minor attributes such as charm, wit, intellect, cunning, and uh, sensuousness, if I might use that word in the nicest possible connotation. <laughs> <laughs> but I was born cautious. I looked at myself in the glass one day and I said to myself, Lilith, my girl, the time comes when the bloom goes off the tenderest peach, when the flesh begins to spread outwards and down like a house settling comfortably into its foundations. When the first few lines appear as though one had blundered into a cobweb, it happens. Oh, not to me. <laughs> Thank God, not to me. Not yet, at any rate, not to me. But it does, I believe, happen. And uh, I resolved, as I looked at my young, quite perfect self in that glass, that I would turn time into an object of ridicule. I would become so accomplished, so magnificently feminine, as to make beauty seem dull and unnecessary by comparison, a toy for children. <laughs> it was hard work, <laughs> but I succeeded brilliantly. I learned to become an emotional, quick-change artist, to calm the boisterous, cheer up the dejected, and become femme fatale or tender comrade at the drop of a hint. Mm. I'm prepared to join in a bacchanalia mm. or, or fall into corpse-like silence, whichever you prefer. An infinity of different women in the course of an evening and each one a compendium of perfection. I have, to be sure, many other accomplishments which our brief acquaintanceship precludes me from mentioning, but I am never, never petulant, jealous, ill-tempered, or possessive. You see, I aim to please. Hello and welcome to Theater Beat. I'm Chris Barlow. <laughs> and I'm Vanessa Beatty. And tonight on our show, we have a star of stage, screen, and radio, and the Wayside Country Store, Jim Raposa of Burr and Burton Academy. And he brings with him Bailey Ring, also of Burr and Burton Academy. She's a junior this year and coming up as a star in their coming play. And she comes across as a senior. All right, get ready for the show. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get started. Bailey, what attracted you to the theater program at Burr and Burton? Um, well, I've been a very theatrical person from the start, so it was just in my nature, kind of, to want to do theater and just to pursue that once, you know, I got to high school. I did it all throughout elementary school, middle school. Why stop, you know? Right. Is that something that you want to carry on doing? Is this theater program a stepping stone for you? It's a possibility. I may be considering to work mostly I'm planning in Chicago mm -hmm. and work the theater scene there and hopefully something works. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you've gotten a well-rounded experience from this program? I feel like I have. I mean, I've, I've had a good experience in terms of just the community of the Riley Center is very much this huge family. Also, the just variety of different roles I've had before. It's, you know, it's good for my resume to be able to say 
you know, hey, I've played Major Houlihan, and I've also played a murder <coughs> s murderess. <laughs> it's all fun. You know? Not many people can say that in their lives. No, it's pretty fun. It's a good time. And Jim, what are the key tasks for you as a drama teacher? Um, I think making sure that that these kids understand how it is to communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's of course I teach them. You know, acting techniques of you know how to rip a script apart, script analysis, beats, objectives. I mean, all the things that we do in acting class. You know, research. Um, but I think one of the key points that I deal with is A, getting them to understand how to communicate and empathize and deal with people one-on-one, -on -one, how to make eye contact, how to listen, how to stop and just be. Um, you know, Bailey's generation and, and future generations are so wired in. Mm -hmm. Everything they do, you know, it's, it, it's like they, they go out on dates through texts, they break up on texts, they, everything happens so there's a disconnect between communicating and making eye contact and reading people's eyes um, because they're so into the screen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, those are, that's probably one of the big key factors. Do um, you find that that causes problems on the stage with dramatic pauses or, you know, Showing the emotion through the voice um, and expression. I find I, I find it difficult for them to understand that acting is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Acting is about listening, reacting, and being in the moment. And that if you're not emotionally available, it's going to be a flat performance. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the issues that they may deal with is making eye contact. Even that's one of the difficult things. I would think reacting would be tough. Yeah, because they have to listen, they have to be, they, they have to be ready to react as opposed to tapping through a, a screen. Taking your time to yeah. what you're going to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, being able to type, like, LOL is a lot easier than to actually, like, genuinely laugh. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Jim doesn't allow us to be wired in in the theater program. That's probably a good call. Probably, also considering you know, if you're like in the moment, you're just like dying on stage, and then suddenly you're like, do, 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 do. It, it, it kind of just, really you know, the scene. it's a little jolting. <laughs> it doesn't fit very well. You know, especially if you're supposed to be in like the 1800s, and you're like, I'm dying of scarlet fever, and then a text goes off. You're like, hold on, sorry, like Johnny texted me. Now, you brought that up. When you go into a role from the 1800s or outside of a time frame that you're used to here, how do you prepare for a role like that? Wikipedia is a very, very good thing. I really just research through the internet. If I, I like read the play mo like a good amount of times before we actually start the rehearsal mm -hmm. process. Um, like for when I did Little Women, I actually, you know, I watched the movie. I read the book mm -hmm. just so I could get a broader, just more rounded understanding of the character I was playing rather than just being like, well, she's shy, so I'm just going to be quiet and just not make a sound. Do you do any research into the time period itself? Yes. Yes. Do you know how that would affect her? Um, relatively. I, mm, I do more research. Well, I know more about the 20th century, so if I need to do a role for that, um, I've got it pretty much on lock just from memory. However, if the role does require me or the setting to be in a time, you know, long ago and far mm -hmm. away, then I will have to do some research because I don't know what it was like back in the 1800s other than the fact it was probably a little miserable. How can you help get the kids prepared for roles like this? How do you help them with the research? Well, what, what we talk about quite a bit is that you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. Mm -hmm. So you, right. you, you really have to understand who you are, where you fit in in a society, and yeah, figure <laughs> that one out. And um, <laughs> what do you have that's in common with the character?
Right. Um, the one thing that many people may not know is that acting classes have an incredible amount of research wrapped into it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, yeah. the ability to go online, and, and, and I share with them how fortunate they are because when I was Libraries in high school, for, for us it was library. Limited. You know, you went to the library, you looked up the encyclopedia, mm -hmm. you know, you, you had that. Nowadays everything is at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So it's a faster process. But the same type of um, learning curve that they need to do a research paper for English or for science, the same ability and thought process that's needed um, is what is, is being supported in acting class, but yet it doesn't seem possibly as difficult because it's something that they want to learn. Right. Um, so that's how, that's how we pull that in. But I'm constantly telling them that research is the key because at their age, they haven't had too much life experience, hopefully, along some of the lines of the more difficult characters that we ask them to play. Um, and now, talking about that, you said that they choose to be a part of this program and something that they strive for. Is that how they get into the course? Yeah, it, it's an open course. It's what's called a survey course. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody that wants to come into the class can come into it. Mm -hmm. um, I have some students who have been in class every semester for four years. Mm -hmm. um, and those students ultimately become leaders. They ultimately become directors. Um, but anyone who wants to take the class can take it. Um, and ultimately, we, each class is different. Sometimes they'll do writing in class. I have people who show up and are like, you know, I really want to focus on writing a script. Okay, great, you're gonna write. We'll get you up on stage acting, mm -hmm. but we'll get you focused on writing. Do you do other things in the class? Like you said, they direct, they, they can write. I mean, do they get to do basically they're, everything? They're, they're, writing? they're responsible for everything. You know, I've had Bailey costume, um, I've had Bailey costume scenes for me. Um, there are times now that they've been in the class for a while, I will turn scenes totally over to them and say, you are directing this final project. Very cool. It is your responsibility to give me lights, to think about sound, blocking, what are you going to need? So these students are self-motivated. Uh, they're motivated to learn, they're motivated, and they, and they understand that the success of that class is really contingent upon how much they commit to it. Do you think that they're more motivated going into the class, or do they come out more motivated because of it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to say they come out more motivated. Mm -hmm. You know? And it seems well-rounded. They could go into any sort of, you know, if they wanted to progress in this in college and beyond, they could yeah, use I mean, what they ba learned there. Bailey has stated that, that she enjoys costumes and, and such. And, you know, we talk about that the same, the same tools that you use for research can be applied to anything within the theater world. And so I would suspect that um, if Bailey wants to go into theater or any of the students want to go into it, that they would be well-rounded enough to handle the technical aspects and being on stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I have many students who, who are stage managers and lighting mm -hmm. and sound and they build the sets mm -hmm. and they deal with hair and makeup and they're dealing with costumes because we can only do so much. It's There's really, so much that goes into it. the, 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 you know, the shows are for them so they have to have ownership of it. Now, do you think this theater program here at Burn Burton, being such a small school in a small town, does this prime them as well as maybe other big schools in larger cities where they have more available to them? Do you think it compares? They have two Broadway performers on staff. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much live with them. I see these students and that school more than I see my own house. <laughs> and That's true. It, You're a basilisk. You live in the walls. Yeah. I mean, we have an incredible department with, with the music department that we have, the, the talent and the information and the experience that they bring, the cinematography class, and then, you know, the, the, the experience that's, that, that, that my wife and I bring to them. When we talk to them, we really try to give them the realistic approach of what happens in the industry. And so that they're ready for the auditions and they're ready for college auditions. Um, I mean, by the time Bailey goes and auditions for college, she'll have been through mm -hmm. professional auditions mm -hmm. with us with photos and resumes and, and monologues and, and songs and everything. So we really, you know, I treat them like, like they're union members. Hmm. Well, that's how you're going to have to do it because going into college, you're just a number. Yeah. You know, you got to stand out a little. Yay! I think this will help you do that. I can't wait Although to I think apply. you have that sort of innate ability to stand out. College! 
<laughs> so assuming that you've always been this this way and this standing out, did your parents support your decision to come into the theater program? Oh yeah. I think they just wanted me to get out of the house. Hmm. I mean, I, 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 I <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> imagine, like, if you're stuck in one space with a kid who won't shut up and won't stop singing, and he's always like, Mom, Mom, hey, Mom, Mom, guess what? Mom, tell me I'm pretty. Like, they're just going to want to kick you out, you know, mm -hmm. have me do something. Well, I think theater's the thing for you. <laughs> Productive, I guess. Do you enjoy it at Burn Burn? Do you enjoy the program? Yeah. Do you get a lot out of it? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. No, I hate it. That's why I've done every <laughs> single show. And you get oh. a lot of satisfaction from entertaining people in this evening. No. <laughs> I hate being the As she prominently attention. displays our GNAT symbol. Yes, she has learned product placement <laughs> very well. Yes, yes, they, they do learn how to do commercials and all the fun stuff. <laughs> Um, Jim, let's come back to you now. Um, what is the most challenging aspect of directing high school students? Um, personally, for like me, Bailey. sometimes, yeah, for <laughs> Bailey. Uh, sometimes I, I, I have to remember they're high school students, but I also never want to shortchange them. So one of the challenging things is to, to share with them that there are people their age and younger who are working in the industry and who are in class and who are extremely disciplined and dedicated. And so it's also to make sure that they have a safe place mm -hmm. to, to be able to experiment, to be able to make mistakes. Um, I, would say, I would say trying to, to teach them the fact that they must fail to succeed. Mm -hmm. Some students are very afraid to fail. It has been drilled into their head that if you fail, you're not worth it. It's a disappointment. And, and I'm sorry, but you fail. When you fail, you learn. Mm -hmm. When you fall off your bike as a kid, you know, you failed. And so you get right back up on that bike and you continue riding. And yeah, it hurts and yeah, it's difficult. But you then overcome it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would say that's sometimes, sometimes one of the difficult issues. And to get them out of their own way. Some, of, some students, just like adults in acting class are afraid. They're afraid to be the center of attention or they're afraid to be honest or they're afraid to be to be open. Mm -hmm. You know? How do you help them get over that? Trust. As a teacher. And I share a lot of myself with them. Mm -hmm. What I, I, I really try to share my history, my background, where I grew up um, I share with them my failures. I share with them how I feel. Mm -hmm. I will walk into class on certain days and say, I am, I am not having a good day today. Because that's the only way I can be honest with mm -hmm. them and that they can read me. And use that even. Yeah, because if I show them that I'm not perfect, if I show them that I have, um, that, that I have these emotions and that I feel, that's where the trust comes in. Mm -hmm. Because how else does it work? Right. You know, it makes me human. And that and makes them comfortable, too, to be there and be themselves yeah. and feel. And that's what they're learning. Themselves. They're learning how to be human, to have mm -hmm. empathy. You know, to, to, to really give of themselves when they're dealing with people. To make honest connections. Um, on the same path, can you describe one of the most successful lessons you have taught in your class? To be passionate about whatever you do and to follow your personal dream. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody ever tell you you couldn't do it. People told me I would never be a dancer, ever. I was like, really? Well, I'll take that challenge, <laughs> right? You know, um, people told me I wouldn't make it in the industry. Um, and I'm like, okay, cool, I'm going to make it. And so, you know, I kind of have a, um, a stubborn streak that if you tell me I can't do something, I'll do it just to spite you. And that's probably what I have so much in common with them about. Is <laughs> I was going to say, do you have any students like that? Yeah, class? I do. I have tons <laughs> of them like that. Um, but I think that that's, it sounds, you know, B Bailey will say it sounds corny, you know, follow your dream. But really, you get one life. Mm. 
You get one life. That's it. So do what you want to do and don't let anybody hold you back. You are the master of cliches. I am. <laughs> it's only because I've been around longer than you have. All right, Bailey, let's throw this back at you. What is the most important lesson you have learned in the program? Don't try to pile a cliche into every sentence. <laughs> there you go. Be passionate about what you love. <laughs> yeah. YOLO. I don't, I don't know. Um, probably just to be professional, which I to that's a total contradiction considering what just happened. Boy, that was a, uh, yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, we're but doing just, good here in the studio, folks. Just, She's a work in progress, people. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, just be professional. Just do your work. Don't have an opinion when it's not needed, which is really hard for me. Well, I think it's okay to but, have an opinion, maybe. Well, like, don't state your opinion if it's not wanted, which I got in trouble for today. Yeah. <laughs> a I mean, few times. These, the, the, the students have to navigate a very mm -hmm. interesting concept that was not prevalent, or I, I wasn't aware if it was prevalent when I was in school. Um, I mean, education system has changed a lot where, you know, how do you feel? What do you think about this? How would you, you know, your opinion is wanted mm -hmm. as a student. A a and it's because teachers and instructors want students to understand how to think. Right. And they want them to figure out things, and they want them to tear things apart. And that's a wonderful thing. And sometimes it works backstage. Yeah. It's great. The creativity. But there are times, and that's, what, that's where we find those boundaries where at this point in time, your opinion of what you think would work is detrimental to where we are in the process the overall of putting picture. a show up. So, but that's an important, but that's an important skill that Absolutely. People understand out in the world because there are going to be times where it's like, hey, we want your opinion. Let's brainstorm. Let's mm -hmm. do it. Let's get it. And then other times it's like, you need to do what's being asked of you and right. that's it. Without question. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a good, good skill for, for the students to learn. Wow. Yeah. And we'll leave on that note. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. Well. Thanks for filming our show twice. Oh, it was a <laughs> pleasure, especially the second time. Um, <laughs> Thank you all for being with no us tonight, <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you, it was great to have the kid on tonight. Yeah. Didn't you think that she was wonderful? And I, she was great. I um, honestly am a little bit jealous of the program that they have there now, and I definitely feel the motivation coming from both of them, the passion, and that they both yeah, theater, really enjoy the program. Theater has a great future if it we does. have more, more people like Bailey and great teachers like Jim. Mm, absolutely. So we <laughs> thank them for coming on our show, and thank you for watching. Thank you. Do you ever think of yourself as actually dead, lying in a box with a lid on it? <laughs> Nor do I, really. It's silly to be depressed by it. I mean, one thinks of it like being alive in a box. One keeps forgetting to take into account the fact that one is dead, which should make all the difference, shouldn't it? I mean, you'd never know you were in a box, would you? It'd be just like being asleep in a box. Not that I'd like to sleep in a box, mind you, not without any air. You'd wake up dead for a start, and then where would you be? Apart from inside a box. That's the bit I don't like, frankly. That's why I don't think about it. Because you'd be helpless, wouldn't you? Stuffed in a box like that, I mean, you'd be in there forever. Even taking into account the fact that one is dead, it isn't a pleasant thought especially if you're dead. If I asked you, right off, I'm going to stuff you in this box. Now, would you rather be alive or dead? Naturally, you'd prefer to be alive. Life in a box is better than no life at all, I expect. You'd have a chance, at least. You could lie there thinking, well, at least I'm not dead. In a minute, someone's going to come along bang on the lid and ask me to come out. You, what's your name? Come out of there. Whatever became of the moment when one first knew about death? There must have been one. 
in childhood, perhaps, when it first occurred to you that you don't go on forever. It must have been shattering, Just stamped into one's memory. And yet, I can't remember it. It never occurred to me at all. What does one make of that? We must be born with an intuition of mortality before we know the words for it, before we know that there are words. Out we come, bloodied and squalling for the, with the knowledge that for all the compasses of the world, there's only one direction. And time is its only measure. <laughs>